We're hoping for a sunny day to start putting up the shell of the yurt. Good morning. We're hoping for a sunny day to start putting up the shell of the yurt. Charles is off picking up some scaffolding. If you're new here, welcome. You are looking at a pile of fill on the left that I've been working on for a while. Charles has helped with the wheelbarrow a little bit, but he's been pretty keyed in on the yurt floor. Over here, you're looking at our three water tanks for the rainwater collection system for a total of about 4,500 gallons of water storage. We're trying to get those underground on the side of a mountain, which is pretty tricky. And we've been burying them by hand with a shovel. We're down to the very last little bit here and inch by inch it is filling in. We look forward to putting topsoil and seeds on this to hold it in place. The morning fog was slow to lift and help was hard to find, but we had been preparing for this day for months and we were anxious to move on to the next step. So we decided to get started. We just dragged the kana, which is the lattice wall, over here onto the decking. It's very, very heavy, and even unpacking the yurt is going to be a feat, much less putting it up. The lattice wall is a single wooden structure with hinges that allow it to expand to the full perimeter of our yurt, minus the front door. That process was not difficult for two people to accomplish, but in hindsight, we wish that we had positioned it directly across from the doorway so the ends would meet up in the correct position without quite so much adjustment. Well, we have our beautiful sunny weather. And in fact, it's a weather window that we have to get the yurt up. They're calling for rain the day after tomorrow. So we have to get the door up because that's the very first step after putting up the kana. And we can't do anything else until we get the door up. Problem is the door is in the frame and it is too heavy for me to lift. So we're trying to be inventive here Wish us good luck. Fortunately, carrying something heavy is much easier than lifting it, and we were able to move it over to a few rugs on the edge of the deck. From there, we dragged it to the doorway and carefully tipped it into place.
After the lattice was secured at the door frame, it would need to be attached to the bender board. But first, the kana had to be stretched and squeezed in various places until every part of it was almost exactly the same height. If you're wondering what Charles is doing with that saw, he had to cut notches in our bender board to attach the brackets at the proper height. While he finished that job, I ran the tension cable through the crotches on the top of the lattice. Then I had to go over it one more time to make it tighter, and Charles muscled the two ends of it together at the hook over the door frame. I marked where each of the first eight rafters will go with the blue tape up on the cable. And then I marked, it's basically north, south, east, west. So I marked on the ring, I just put north, northeast in the hole that these rafters go in. So they're all, all marked and we hopefully won't make a mistake. Yeah, there are eight rafters with the snow and wind kit that have to have these metal plates on them. They screw into the rafter and then they screw into the ring so they're actually attached with more than just weight. So I got the first eight with the brackets on them so we can put those in, screw them in, then all the rest of them are, will just slide in. As we ran out of daylight we staged the rooftop ring and the first few rafters in high hopes that we might recruit some neighbors to help us with some heavy lifting the next day. You're invited also to join us for day two of the yurt raising in our next episode.